，真是。Good morning. Let us all stand. And let us turn to one another and welcome each other in our celebration this morning. And after we have acknowledged each other and acknowledge our loving God who invites us into this celebration, today we celebrate the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. We take now this occasion to lift up to the Lord one another, our intentions. We also remember to pray for the whole world, for people in dire and destitute situations. We pray also for families that are struggling and for those who continue to serve in the, for the first responders, those in the front lines and those who serve the poor and the needy. Our entrance song is glory and praise to our God. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. We, the daughters and sons of Him, who build the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you gathered to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You free us from the bonds of sin and death. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. You stand by us and give us strength. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, 
Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. To our Lord Jesus Christ, their Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter as well. It was a feast of the unleavened bread. He had him taken into custody and put into prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was put in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On that very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers. While outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in his cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up, quickly. The chains fell from his wrist. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to an iron gate leading out to the city which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. The word of the Lord. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be in ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, and the lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard. And from all of his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rest. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed, blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord will rest. A reading from the second letter to Saint, of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who longed for his appearance. 
the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. 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 Peter and upon the rock I will build my church and the gates of the of the nether world shall not prevail against it Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him reply, blessed are you Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ in our second reading paul's letter to timothy um, Peter, Paul compared his life to running a race. And that made me think of a time when my daughter, when she was a freshman in college, decided that she was going to run the half marathon in the LA Marathon. Now what makes that an interesting decision is she'd never run a, a step in her life except when she was made to in PE. Yes, there may have been a boy involved. But anyway, um, going through that, she realized that she learned from others who were running and who ran half marathons, that it took several months of preparation. So she had all her for preparation of everything she had to do every day. You know, this day was a stretch day, this day you'd run so many miles, whatever. So actually her decision to run the half marathon wasn't just about making that decision, but every single day she had to make a decision do I take the next step in that preparation? You know, even if she's tired, do I still go and run the three miles that the schedule says I'm supposed to run? And in many ways, if we think about our Christian journey, our Christian journey begins with us making a choice. But in reality, our Christian journey that you and I have, every single day, you and I make that choice to continue in that journey to reaffirm the choice we made. And we see that today in the lives of St. Peter's and Paul, two of the um, great apostles of our church. Two men totally different, to 
totally different personalities, totally different background. But if we look at their stories, we see how they, um, while they had a big moment of choice to begin, also continued every single day to continue to make choices to follow God. Peter made the choice right at the beginning. Whatever he heard Jesus say on that water shore caused him to leave his business and leave his family and be with him. Paul, as we know, dramatically was um, knocked off his horse and lost his sight for several days. But both of them then spent many years in formation, really learning about who Christ was. Peter, right at the feet of Jesus, learning from him. Paul spent almost 10 years talking to other people. In fact, at one point, Paul describes that he spent two weeks alone with Peter. I wonder what the two of them talked about. And then you and I recognize that even though our journey began with our baptism, we've spent many years and continue to spend in that formation to learn about Christ. In our second reading, Paul today wrote about that the Lord has stood by him. The Lord has given him strength. And we see many times as Paul was facing persecution, it would have been easy for him to walk away, but it was that strength of the Lord that kept him, kept his faith going, kept him being able to share the good news with others. We heard in the first reading an example of Peter being arrested one of many times that Peter was arrested, um, and yet the trusting in God as God led him out of the prison. Both Peter and Paul, even though they started their lives on different courses, both ended up giving their lives in the city of Rome um, as martyrdom. Now back to my daughter. She did finally work hard and she did go to the um, half marathon in Los Angeles, and I was at the finish line, and she did complete the race. But to me, what was most amazing that day when I was there with thousands of people is it wasn't a competition against each other, but it was that each person helped everybody. You would see someone struggling towards the end, as I was waiting for my daughter to finally come across the finish line, but um, as you waited for the, you see people struggle, everyone cheering them on, encouraging them, helping them come through. And as we heard in our second reading, Paul said, each one of us have that same obligation to cheer others on. When we see others in need, we're called to be part of that, to help others Cross the finish line. So as we continue our journey, may we recognize very much those words that Paul said. It was not about winning the race, but Paul said, I have competed well, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. May you and I recognize that our Christian faith is not a sprint, but a marathon. And may we, like Peter and Paul, keep the faith. St. Peter, pray for us. St. Paul, pray for us. Let us all stand as together we profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our intentions to the loving Father with that same faith of the apostles, Peter and Paul, with the faith of the fisherman on whom the church is built, and the faith of the teacher of so many nations. Our response, Lord, be our rock. Lord, be our rock. That Pope Francis, the successor of St. Peter, may bear the keys of the kingdom with wisdom and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our rock. That missionaries in foreign lands may have the zeal which St. Paul had in bringing the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our rock. That we may love our faith and eagerly share it with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our rock. That those who are suffering on account of their faith may find strength in the blood shed by the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our rock. That the faithful departed may be, may be made worthy of the crown of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our rock. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold thee in our hearts for our families and our loved ones. We pray for the intentions for whom this Mass is offered, intentions of Oscar and Carmen Mogul, for the eternal repose of the souls of Joe D. Karam and Father Luis Serrano. We also lift up the intentions that have been submitted to us in thanksgiving for Father Gregory Dick, for Henry Marquez, Ruby de la Cruz, Carlos de Soros, Saul and Ophelia Burgos, for Bud Kais, and for Ethan and Preston La. We pray for the health and strength needed by Tyler Camerino, and we remember our dearly departed Cecilia Tadulan Cagampang, and Edina Castro, Eustachia Cabatana, and Susan Yoon. We lift up also the prayers we have placed in the Ark of Prayer chest, as well as those in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord be our rock. Almighty God and Father, hear the prayers of this community gathered in the faith of the apostles and helped by their intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed day, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It would become for us the bread of life. Blessed day, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It would become our spiritual drink. Thank you. 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that what we present to your name for consecration and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncheli Etera, Gloria Tua, O Sana in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, O Sana in excelsis. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Santiago de Compostela, Saints Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Anus Dei, quit olis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, quit olis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, quit olis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And together with those who are homebound and worshiping with us, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. To our loving Mother Mary, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to Saint Joseph, hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son, in you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father, and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy part throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Have a blessed day, everyone.